The spine is one of the most important structures in your body, allowing for bending, rotating, and twisting, along with protecting the spinal cord and each nerve root that enters and exits from intervertebral foramen, or openings, between each segment of the spine. These segments are called vertebrae and are separated by intervertebral discs that act as shock absorbers. These discs are made up of an inner soft gelatinous core called the nucleus propulsus and an outer fibrous layer called the annulus fibrosus. As the discs degenerate, the vertebrae can lose their ability to articulate and glide over one another to allow movement. If you are experiencing leg pain or numbness, it could be a symptom of a disc herniation in the lumbar spine or lower back. Degenerative disc disease is often to blame and causes stresses in the disc structure that lead to herniations. As the integrity of an intervertebral disc decreases, the ability of the annulus to contain the nucleus also decreases. In most cases that require surgical intervention, the herniation pushes out and against a nearby nerve root as it extends out from the spinal column to your legs. This nerve compression is what causes reduced neurological function and therefore pain in one or both legs. An endoscopic approach can be employed to address this issue and is regarded as a highly effective procedure that may bring relief and restore mobility. To reach the affected disc during a transforaminal endoscopic discectomy procedure, the surgeon will use fluoroscopy or X-ray imaging to pinpoint the appropriate trajectory to place a needle. Over this needle, dilators are placed to move soft tissue and muscle from harm's way. A cannula is then placed over the dilators to act as a port through which a specialized spine endoscope will be inserted. This system allows for real-time direct visualization of the target region, giving surgeons greater surgical precision through an incision usually no larger than one centimeter. During a transforaminal discectomy, the surgeon is targeting what is called Cambin's triangle. This approach involves targeting near the compressed nerve root, retracting and protecting it during surgery, and removing disc material that has escaped from the nucleus. Once the herniation has been removed, the surgeon will use small instruments, including a ball tip probe, to explore and ensure all disc fragments have been removed. After removing the cannula and endoscope, a stitch or two may be used before a small bandage is placed to close the incision. By employing an endoscopic transforaminal approach to a disc herniation, your surgeon can reduce the risk of damaging soft tissue, muscle, and neural structures, while also reducing the risk of infection, and therefore achieving fewer postoperative complications that can help you get back to normal activity sooner.